Hello, everyone. My name is Jim Burkhardt with IHS, and welcome to the Energy uh, Security Strategic Dialogue at IHS Energy Sierra Week. You know, some folks may think, well, what, what, what do you mean by energy security? Energy is a pretty broad term. Security is a broad term. You put them together, what exactly do you mean? And uh, I think at perhaps at its most basic level, uh, energy security is where uh, the supply of energy is not a hindrance to economic growth, or you could put a more positive spin where energy supply uh, enables or accelerates uh, economic growth. But this, this issue of energy security, there's a pretty wide spectrum of ideas to discuss. It depends on one's perspective. In this country, uh, typically when we've said energy uh, security, we're talking about oil supply uh, security, at least historically that's been the case over the decades. If you're uh, from an oil exporting country or a gas exporting country, energy security may be more about demand. If I'm going to invest billions of dollars in new supply, will demand for my product uh, be there in the future? And for both, um, and for any supplier, uh, or consumer, you know, there's a national security element to uh, energy security. For some, there may be uh, energy security may be tied up um, with climate. So there's a range of perspectives and issues uh, to discuss when it comes to uh, energy security. And fortunately uh, for you and for me, we have a great panel here to discuss uh, energy security. Uh, right, uh, immediately to, to my right, your left, is uh, Robbie Diamond. Robbie's the uh, founder, president, and CEO of Securing America's Future Energy, acronym is SAFE. Uh, Robbie formed SAFE with um, uh, Fred Smith, the head of FedEx, and General PX uh, Kelly. And uh, Robbie and SAFE's ideas have found their way into Bush and Obama administration uh, energy bills. Next to Robbie is uh, Jack Girard. Jack is the president and CEO of the American Petroleum Institute, uh, which I'm sure most of you know. It's the, uh, the U.S. oil and natural gas industry's national trade association, and it's a prominent, important voice in energy uh, policy issues. And to Jack's right, we have David Goldwyn. Uh, David's the pre president and founder of uh, Goldwyn Global Strategies. David's worked at the highest levels of the White House, State Department, uh, and the National Security Council, among others. Uh, David also served as uh, Secretary of State Hillary Clinton's uh, Special Envoy and Coordinator for International uh, Energy Affairs. And at the end, last but definitely not least, uh, Frank Verastro. Senior Vice President and James R. Schlesinger Chair for Energy and Geopolitics at the Center for Strategic and International Studies, CSIS. Uh, Frank brings many years of experience uh, in the public policy space as well as many years of uh, his experience uh, in the industry. I think Frank is known from uh, Dallas to Dauran and points in between for his uh, knowledge and insights on energy. So thank you and welcome again uh, to all uh, four of you. So the way this is going to work, I'm going to ask each of them uh, a question or two, and then uh, we will open it up to the audience. And we're not going to ask you to write down the words on the cards. Uh, you, we're actually going to, you can, we have two microphones, and so you'll have an opportunity to uh, ask a question or provide a comment. We just would ask you not to deliver speeches from the floor, but we certainly want to uh, engage you uh, in the discussion uh, in just a little bit. So think of your questions, your comments. We want to hear from you and engage uh, the folks um, up here. So uh, let me start uh, with you, Jack, by asking you um, uh, a question uh, to help set the framework, at least when it comes to the U.S. Uh, Jack, how dramatic have the changes been in U.S. oil and gas production over the years? How profound, how significant is this change we've seen. Well I, well, I think, Jim, thank you very much for including us today in the conversation. I think many of us, as we look back in just a short history of time, over five, six years ago, no one would have predicted we'd be where we are today. Now, I know there's a lot of folks looking back now saying, oh, I could have predicted that. Well, I think the, the general consensus is where many of us are surprised, pleasantly surprised, about how far we've come. So it really is a significant game changer. 
Let me just tie one thing into that, Jim, which I think is very important from our vantage point. But this has allowed for us as a nation not only to look at the security equation, whether we think of it from a supply standpoint, a demand standpoint, or uh, interdependence around on a global scale, but it's changed the politics of oil and natural gas. And we spend a fair amount of time in that realm in terms of public policy. And what I mean by that is, is we've strongly encouraged others to think of this opportunity, this game changer, as a chance to break out of the historic paradigms where we think of oil and gas oft times as Republicans versus Democrats. That's not true anymore. When you look at where we are today, you look at a state like North Dakota. Who would have thought five years ago North Dakota would be the number two oil producer in the country today? But now we have people coming together saying this is a unique American opportunity, a unique American moment that not only changes the energy security of our nation in whatever way you choose to define it, but really has geopolitical implications. We're reminded well this week in the Ukrainian situation. You look in the Middle East, you look at Asia, you look at Europe and elsewhere. This is unprecedented. So when we think of it and how big a deal it is, it's a huge deal. It's a game changer, as we've often said, it's a chance in a lifetime for this country, thinking now specifically the United States, to really step up. And we believe the U.S. can become the energy superpower of the world because of this game changer. Jack, you mentioned North Dakota and just a couple interesting factoids. You know, North Dakota produces more oil than a couple of OPEC countries now. Uh, Texas <clears throat> produces more oil than, than Venezuela. Uh, some interesting trends. So, Jack, given these you know, really dramatic changes in uh, U.S. oil and gas production, do you have thoughts about how this should inform U.S. energy policy? Yeah, a absolutely, Jim. And I, I think what's fascinating today is, and uh, I've often said, the Congress of the United States, let's think of it from a federal level of policy perspective, the Congress and the administration, as, as a matter of fact, are lagging indicators. And so what does this mean for the country? The politicians and the public policy officials are catching up to the reality of what's taking place in the economy and in the energy sphere. And I believe we're at a point of transition where those politicians are beginning to understand just how significant this game changer really is. I was struck yesterday by Senator Udall of Colorado who came out in support of increased LNG exports, right? Just a while back, he voted against the Keystone XL pipeline. So we're seeing an evolution of policy shifts as a result of this energy paradigm. And the more that the politicians begin to understand what the people, the voters are thinking as they see job creation, as they see economic expansion. And the beauty of this is clear across the country. It's no longer limited to Texas, you know, Louisiana, Oklahoma, kind of the historic basins. We're seeing this activity in Pennsylvania, Ohio, North Dakota, Arkansas, the list goes on. So it is very significant. We are seeing shifts in the reality, and I believe as we stay focused on it as a nation, as we stay focused on it as an industry, we're going to see some very significant things come out of this. You know, who would have thought a few months ago we'd be debating crude exports in the United States? Who would have thought we'd been talking about LNG exports? I mean, the paradigm has shifted 180 degrees. So that we're going to have a lot of new issues on the table, but I think we're fast getting there and the transition's occurring quickly. 